Knowing how to analyze political cartoons is a useful skill for high school students to learn. Although these cartoons aim to amuse, it's important to remember that they are also biased towards one particular point of view. This bias will normally reflect the editorial viewpoint of the newspaper or magazine in which the cartoon appears. Cartoonists commonly use five techniques to present their point of view. These are labeling, symbolism, exaggeration, analogy, and irony. Keep in mind that not all of these techniques will be used in every cartoon that you view. First, a little context. This cartoon was created in 1896, at a time when the major world powers were competing to gain new colonies. Britain at this time had already built a vast empire that stretched around the world, making it the envy of other major powers. The title of this cartoon is Greedy Johnny, Johnny being of course Britain. To make his point, the cartoonist has labelled the various sweets and toys with the names of some British colonies. The group of envious onlookers in the background are labelled with the names of the major powers. That's a good example of how labelling helps the audience to understand the point being made by the cartoonist. Cartoonists use symbols to present complex ideas or values. For example, a dove with an olive branch in its beak is used to represent peace. In this cartoon from 1907, the cartoonist wanted to poke fun at the World Peace Conference taking place at The Hague. The dove, symbolising peace, is caged by rifles. It sits on a perch with barrels of gunpowder at either end and the flags of the major powers above. Some countries are also symbolised. The character John Bull is often used to symbolise Britain or England. Uncle Sam, the tall figure in the Stars and Stripes suit, is used to symbolise the United States of America. Cartoonists often exaggerate the size of people and objects to help make a point. This cartoon focuses on the risks being taken by the major powers as they struggle to gain a foothold in China. Uncle Sam is carrying an oversized lantern labelled Prudence. On either side of the group are oversized spring traps labelled Casus Belli, which is a Latin expression for an act or situation that can provoke war. This cartoon, created in 1903, wanted to draw attention to the risks of war. The cartoonists therefore placed the world leaders in a classroom. Their teacher, labelled Diplomacy, has asked them to figure out how much a world war would cost given that the Boer War in South Africa had recently cost Britain $825 million. The last of the five techniques is irony. This cartoon was created in 1907 following the World Peace Conference. The arms race between the major European powers at the time ensured that it achieved very little. The irony in this cartoon is the way the attendees, representing the major powers, rush to retrieve their weapons as they leave the conference. It suggests that there was never any real intention by them to seek peaceful solutions to their differences. So, to sum up, let's finally look at a cartoon from 1913 titled There's Always a Last Straw. The cartoonist wanted to poke fun at Germany's increasing taxation of its population to finance military spending. Labelling helps the viewer understand that the last straw referred to in the caption is the increased war taxation on the German people. Symbolism includes the German spiked helmet on the camel and a caricature of the German Kaiser loading weapons. An example of exaggeration is the oversized load of weapons on the camel's back. 
The analogy is, of course, between the burden of war taxation on the German population and the enormous load of weapons on the camel. And finally, the irony is that the German economy was deeply in debt by 1913. But rather than cut back on military spending, the government instead continued to increase it. That explains the title of the cartoon, There's Always a Last Straw.